Good morning, readers. Today is Friday, July 9th, and you're listening to First Chapter Fridays, presented by the Baker Free Library. My name is Juliana, and I am the library's youth services librarian. Welcome to this week's program. Each Friday throughout the summer, I'll be sharing the first chapter of a book with you that explores, in either a big way or a small way, the animal kingdom. If you like today's chapter, you can place a reserve on the featured book using the library's catalog or by calling the library at 224-7113. While you're listening today, I invite you to jot down any thoughts, questions, or ideas you have about the story. You can also color or draw, pick up your room, build with Legos, or work on a craft project while you listen. Okay, let's jump into today's story. Today, we're venturing across the world to the lush, wild forests of Tasmania, an island off the coast of Australia. Join Louisa as she braves the wilderness to save the last Tasmanian tiger from extinction in Music for Tigers by Michelle Katarusman. Shipped halfway around the world to spend the summer with her mom's eccentric Australian relatives, middle schooler Louisa is prepared to be resentful. But life at the family's remote camp in the Tasmanian rainforest is intriguing, to say the least. There are pig-footed bandicoots, scary spiders, weird noises in the night, and a quirky boy named Colin who cooks the most amazing meals. Not the least strange is her uncle Ruff, with his unusual pet and veiled hints about something called Convict Rock. Finally, Louisa learns the truth. Convict Rock is a sanctuary established by her great-grandmother Eleanor, a sanctuary for Tasmanian tigers, Australia's large marsupials that were famously hunted into extinction almost a hundred years ago. Or so the world believes. Hidden in the rainforest at Convict Rock, one tiger remains. But now the sanctuary is threatened by a mining operation, and the last Tasmanian tiger must be lured deeper into the forest. The problem is, not since her great-grandmother has a member of the family been able to earn the shy animal's trust. Want to hear more of this adventure? Let's begin reading Music for Tigers by Michelle Katarusman. Chapter 1. Vivaldi and Bunyips The first sound I hear in the forest at the bottom of the world is Vivaldi's spring from the four seasons. There is a movement in the violin concerto that's meant to mimic the sound of birds. When I step off the bus in the Tarkeen bush, that's exactly what I hear. An orchestra of birdsong descends like musical rain from the Tasmanian treetops as I'm enveloped into a landscape of towering bluish-green eucalypts. Listen to that, I say to myself, and lift my face toward the swaying gums. The giant trees look exactly the way my sister Sophie described them to me, including their minty pine scent. My uncle, I know it's my uncle because he's the only one standing at the bus stop, and my mom told me he would be waiting for me. She also told me to expect him to be a little odd. Tips his wide-brimmed hat to the bus driver, picks up my duffel bag, and tramps toward what barely looks wide enough to be called a path between the trees. My uncle is tall and has a bushy, ginger-colored beard, exactly like the photo my mom had shown me. Let's go, he calls over his shoulder, before disappearing into thick foliage. My mom had not been wrong about the odd part. The bus driver gives me a thumbs up, waves, and toots the horn before continuing on her way along the narrow, winding mountain road. Millie had listened patiently to me the whole way from Launston. She'd heard all about how my parents are spending the summer in the wetlands of southern Ontario, so my mom can study an endangered amphibian called the Fowler's Toad. About how I was sent here, to my mom's family's bush camp, in the remote Tasmanian rainforest and how, apparently, the camp is being bulldozed soon, so this is my last chance to have the experience of a lifetime. She also got an earful about the fact that what I really want to be doing this summer is practicing for a place in the Toronto Symphony Youth Orchestra, preferably in the comfort of my own home. Millie had nodded politely for the entire four-hour ride. I think it's hard for them to believe I don't want to be a scientist like them, I said. Believe it or not, I don't want to spend my days knee-deep in swamp water looking for endangered toads like my mother, or traipsing around the globe writing about the environment like my father, or talking to trees like my sister Sophie. I sighed. I want to be a violinist. 
Millie was an excellent listener, although, come to think of it, I wonder how much she was able to hear with those earbuds she was wearing. Anyway, she was a lot nicer than my uncle, who I now scamper to catch up with. The birds, I call out once I am within arm's reach of my uncle. It's Vivaldi's spring. My uncle's large frame keeps walking. I look around me. We're in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by nothing except sore and eucalypts and enormous ground ferns. I grip my violin case and swing my backpack over my shoulder. I hurry to keep up. How far do we have to walk? I ask him, already breathless. He grunts and swats his hand in a forward motion that I guess means just follow. With no other choice, I do, keeping my eyes glued to the dirt path. I read all about Australian deadlies on the airplane from Toronto. Practically everything that crawls and slithers is venomous and wants to kill you here. Redback spiders, funnelweb spiders, tiger snakes, lowland copperhead snakes, and white lip snakes. I'm running the list through my head when I look up and see two black eyes staring at me. I scream and stop dead in my tracks. The beady eyes are attached to a body that looks like a giant rodent with rabbit ears and a long snout. It's peering at me from over my uncle's shoulder. I scream again and my uncle turns around. Shh, you're scaring her, he says. The critter gives a shrill squeak and hides its furry head in his armpit. I can't help but notice that its orangey-brown fur is the same color as my uncle's beard. What? What is it? I ask. Is it poisonous? Poisonous? He chuckles. Not likely. Are all Canadians so jumpy? Are all Australians so strange? Hmm. I'm guessing no. He turns on his boot heel and keeps walking. Amazing. I'm in the middle of nowhere with a bearded giant and his color-coordinated sidekick. Well, thanks to my nature-crazed parents, I say, speaking to his back, I'm here walking through the land of creepy crawlies instead, I pause to catch my breath, instead of being safe at home, practicing for my audition like I should be. I pluck a piece of tree bark out of my hair. Honestly, I thought it was the grown-ups who were meant to worry about keeping us kids safe, not the other way around. You talk a lot, he mumbles from up ahead. We huff on, and on, and on. The only view of his sidekick now is a tuft of white hair at the end of its tail that pokes out from under his arm. I keep my ears tuned, hoping to catch Vivaldi again, but all I hear is my own ragged breath. How many miles have we walked? My backpack begins to feel like a dead weight, and I start sweating despite the cool temperature. The sweat brings flies. A flying squadron of fat black pests buzz around my face and dive bomb my eyes and mouth. Stop! I double over, coughing. I think I swallowed one. I cough some more. My uncle stops. Don't worry, he says in his deadpan voice. It won't kill you. I stand up and take the canteen of water he hands me. Are you sure? I ask. That, on the other hand, he says, pointing his chin over my left shoulder. That might. I spin around. What? Where? You didn't see it? He asks. Where? I keep spinning, frantically scanning the dense green foliage around me. What is it? A bunyip. He sets down my duffel bag and scratches his beard. They're pretty bad around here. A bunyip? I don't remember reading about bunyips in my guidebook on Australian deadlies. What's a bunyip? He nods gravely while I swat and pat my head, up and down my jeans and all over my hoodie to make sure nothing is crawling on me. Is it a kind of spider? I ask. Get it off me. You haven't heard about the famous Australian bunyip, he asked with a twinkle. It has fur and feathers and a tail and claws and a beak. It bounces like a kangaroo and laughs like a kookaburra before it eats you up in a single gulp like a great white shark. I stop spinning and swatting. Oh, I get it. You're joking. I sigh. Very funny. My uncle has a full belly kind of laugh. He puts his whole body into it. It gets them every time, he says, slapping his thigh. It's going to be a long summer, I say. Kid, it's not summer here, he says. You're in the southern hemisphere now. It's winter. Lucky me, I say. Look on the bright side, he says, stroking the ball of fur that is now curled up in the crook of his arm. You've got me, my excellent jokes, and Piggy here to keep you company. Is that his name? I watch as the critter pokes the air with his long snout, making sniffling noises in my direction. What kind of animal is he? Her. Female, he says, still not answering my question. He takes back the canteen and picks up my bag again, swinging it over his shoulder. Come on, not much further. We keep walking, but at a slower pace. 
After a few minutes, I hear the Vivaldi bird song again. Do you hear that? I pause to listen. I finally get what Vivaldo's spring concerto was meant to sound like. It's so beautiful. That's just the currawongs, he says, looking at the treetops before taking another step. Come on, kid, he calls. Better get a move on before that bunyip gets you. I suspect, among his many strange personality traits, my uncle is tone deaf. And that's the end of the first chapter, readers. If you'd like to hear more of this story, call the library or visit bowbakerfreelibrary.org to reserve Music for Tigers by Michelle Katerusman. To hear the rest of this summer's featured titles, search for First Chapter Fridays on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere else you like to tune in. You can also view the library's entire catalog of episodes, past and present, at anchor.fm slash bfl5 or visit the library's website to see a full listing of episodes. Thank you for listening to this episode of First Chapter Fridays. Tune in again next week for another great story.